Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Lopez Patton. I'm the Dean of Students here at Pacific Oaks College. Oh, Michael. I have the special privilege and honor this morning of introducing our keynote speaker to you, Chancey Martorell. Chancey is the founder and executive director of the Thai Community Development Center, known as the Thai CDC, a nonprofit organization established in 1994 to improve the lives of Thai immigrants. Chancey is known for her work on human rights cases involving over 2,000 Thai victims of human trafficking. Her advocacy on behalf of the victims has made her a leading expert and a spokesperson on the serious issue of modern day slavery. In the early morning hours of August 2nd, 1995, Chancey Martorell met with government authorities and law enforcement a few blocks away from a compound they were about to raid in El Monte, California. The compound was a row of apartment duplexes on a quiet residential street. During the raid, 72 Thai nationals were found working in conditions of slavery in a makeshift garment factory. Some of those workers had been enslaved for up to seven years. The, that raid captured international attention and would be deemed one of the worst incidents in modern day slavery. Just a few years later in 1999, under Chansey's leadership, Thai CDC played a pivotal role in an eight year long community organizing campaign to establish East Hollywood, California as the first Thai town in the nation. The Thai town designation was the first step in a multifaceted economic development strategy to revitalize a depressed section of Hollywood. Born in Thailand and raised in Los Angeles, Chansey earned her bachelor's degree in political science and public law and a master's degree in urban planning with specialization in urban regional development, third world development at UCLA. Chansey Martorell is someone who we would like to see all of you become, someone who can show everyone that one person can make a difference. Distinguished guests, graduates of Pacific Oaks College, please welcome Chansey Martorell. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Michael. Wow, um, this is amazing. Uh, before I begin, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the Pacific Oaks College, to President Jack Paddington, Dean of Students, Michael Lopez Patton, and Chief of Staff, Carrie Zalkin, for extending to me the privilege and opportunity to come before the 2020 and 2021 Pacific Oaks graduating class as a commencement speaker. Thank you so much. What an honor it is to be here. And I also want to extend a huge thanks to the folks that you don't see in front of you here today uh, that have supported me over the years and even right now, and really uh, contribute to the success of the Thai Community Development Center and also to my own personal progression as a person, as an individual. And those are my family, my friends, Thai CDC staff, volunteers, interns, board members, and former board members. And they're right there. If all of you could take a stand, please stand, rise. Thank you so much for being here on this occasion. Thank you, I really feel supported having all of you here today with me. So um, now I would like to offer you some of my thoughts on the very important topic of social justice a topic I feel very, very passionately about and something I have sought after all my life, regardless of the price. I hope that by the end of this talk, I will have given you something to think about as you make some of the fundamental choices in your life 
or that you will gain a new perspective on your work if you are already part of the never-ending struggle for justice. But when all is said and done, whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever you may be doing, each and every one of you has the freedom to choose every day of your lives how you want to see justice achieved. And so my question to you is this, are you willing to pay the price of justice? Because justice is not free. Nothing worth having in life is ever free. And there are few things that are as rare and fleeting as true justice. As I was preparing my remarks, I delved into the history, founding principles, and core values of Pacific Oaks College. I was impressed by how timely and relevant they are to modern day society. They couldn't be more timely if the college were founded in 2021, particularly with respect to its four core values that you just heard previously of respect, diversity, social justice, which is what I'm speaking about, and inclusion. If ever in the history of the United States, there has been a time in which we as a people needed to put into practice the values of respect, diversity, social justice, and inclusion, it is now. As you heard in my introduction, I am the founder and executive director of the Thai Community Development Center that was founded initially to help Thai immigrants overcome cultural, linguistic, legal, and economic barriers that prevent them from integrating into American society and achieving their American dreams. What initially appeared to be a simple, straightforward, organizational mission has taken me on an extraordinary journey that has comprised a massive ongoing struggle to combat human trafficking, the development of affordable housing for working poor immigrants and low-income seniors, a widening effort to give inner city residents a voice in their local government so they can shape the growth, development, and evolution of their communities, and a never-ending battle to bring public resources to these communities while giving its members the opportunity to lift themselves economically. I can tell you that over these past 27 years, in many respects, the struggle to make the American dream a reality for immigrants, the poor, the disenfranchised and marginalized members of our society has felt more like a battle than I could have ever imagined. Our nation was built on many lofty values and principles, such as liberty, equality, and justice. Nonetheless, the daily workings of our society are founded on an entirely different set of principles. All too often, we discover that might makes right and profit takes precedence over people. As an undocumented immigrant from Southeast Asia, whose family made a living through menial jobs and the underground economy, I can attest that the American dream comes at a heavy price. When I resolved to dedicate my life to alleviating the burdens of my immigrant community and of all marginalized people, I thought I was building on the work of countless generations that had gone before me. I believed the momentum of many powerful social movements from labor rights to civil rights would drive my work forward that my efforts 
would be welcomed by society as a whole for trying to make this a better nation for everyone. What I did encounter along the way were a lot of cheerleaders, a lot of well-wishers, a lot of sympathizers, a great many spectators, a number of volunteers, and occasionally some real investors, people who were willing to invest their time, resources, passion, and energy into the cause of social justice. Along the way, I also learned some valuable lessons. I learned that those in power love to praise those who devote themselves to public causes but they don't really listen to you unless you have the means to turn out votes or campaign contributions. In this regard, I would add a corollary, corollary to the quote by former slave and abolitionist Frederick Douglass, who said, quote, power concedes nothing without a demand, end quote. I would add that power concedes nothing without a demand by those who can mobilize voters or fill campaign war chest. I have also learned that public pressure for social causes cannot be mounted without public knowledge or public awareness. And the public's awareness depends largely on one's ability to successfully link a particular cause to a popular news trend that will generate ratings. No cause, however worthy, however important, or critical, or awe-encompassing, is ever judged on its own merit. The virtue of any cause in itself is not sufficient for its realization in a society that is organized primarily to facilitate consumption. So why am I here? What do I have to offer you that will galvanize the essence of what you have achieved over these past few years at Pacific Oaks? The environmental activist Greta Thunberg recently summed up very eloquently all of the political speeches given on the environment. Quote, there is no planet B blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is not about some expensive, politically correct green act of bunny hugging, blah, blah, blah. Green economy, blah, blah, blah. Climate neutral, blah, blah, blah. Net zero by 2050, blah, blah, blah. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to give you the equivalent in a commencement speech, quote, Glorious future, blah, blah, blah. Great aspirations, blah, blah, blah. Blaze a new path, blah, blah, blah. I want to tell you that every minute that I have spent working on behalf of trafficking victims, migrant farm workers, the welfare dependent, garment workers, domestic workers, the uninsured, domestic violence victims, the unhoused, the undocumented, the unemployed and underemployed has been worth it. The victories we have accomplished, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The victories we have accomplished have been many and great. We have taken down exploitive businesses, prosecuted human traffickers, built affordable housing, won millions of dollars in back wages, liberated thousands from bondage and servitude, pressed for groundbreaking reformist legislation, and held the mighty and powerful accountable. All of this because a handful of people gave everything they had. Among those victories was the liberation of 72 Thai immigrant garment workers 
held in virtual slavery for years in what became known as the first case of modern day slavery in US history. Those workers went on to fight for justice, prosecuting their captors, demanding their rightful wages, and acquiring legal residency and then US citizenship. In fact, the daughter of one of those workers, Evelyn Sussman, is graduating from you, with you, I mean, from Pacific Oaks College, with you this very day. Now, unfortunately, she can't be here today. Um, but I want to do say congratulations, Evelyn Sussman. <laughs> And her father, Steve Sussman, her stepfather, is here, right there, waving. And her brother, her half-brother, Max, is right there, too, who's now a student at UC Riverside. And then families of other members of uh, the worker from the Almonte case, uh, the Sokowitz, are here, too, I see. And then one of the federal agents from the US Department of Labor, who was part of that raid. Paul Chang is here too. <laughs> so now, fortunately, I am not here to recruit you to Thai CDC. Sorry about that staff and board members, because this is an exceptional class, which I would love to have at Thai CDC. I'm actually here. <laughs> I am actually, of course, you're welcome to apply for internship, to volunteer, uh, to even join our staff. You're all welcome. Uh, so yes, in a way, it would be great to have you as well, especially all the degrees that you're getting uh, in childhood development, in uh, social work, education. Um, well, well, I'm actually here to recruit you to the realization of your own highest values the task of building alabaster cities undimmed by human tears shouldn't be so hard. Fortunately, those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. We are the many, they are the few. If this nation does not resemble our ideals, it is because we, the people, who are the foundation of this country, of this democracy, are, you not, are not united by the things we have in common. We are divided by the things that simply don't matter. We fight among ourselves an endless culture war, both from the left and the right, blaming our neighbors, the people standing next to us, the people we work with, the people we live with, the people in our own communities who may not look like us, but struggle and fight and suffer just like us. We blame them for all our nation's failings. While we fight among ourselves, the privileged few who have the means to buy and sell politicians like commodities rule us, making a mockery of our democracy. They create endless wars. They poison our natural resources. They exploit working people. They lay to waste our planet. They built prisons for the poor and palaces for themselves. They spread lies and stoke hatred. They make healthcare and higher education inaccessible, bringing whole generations into bondage through insurmountable debt. This is not the work of your neighbor, neighbors. This is not the doing of immigrants, civil servants, minorities, teachers, welfare recipients, the LGBTQ community, labor unions, single mothers, or blue collar workers. We the people are not the problem. We are the solution. When we stand united, we will live in the nation we deserve. It is my hope that you will ultimately choose unwavering principle over political expediency, discomfort over comfort, sacrifice over privilege, change over the status quo, action over complacency, and above all, 
justice at whatever the price. I expect that when you are told that we cannot change the trajectory of our society because it is too costly or difficult to take a more humane or greener path, you will be the voice of our collective history. And you will say that we have taken on greater challenges than this and succeeded because the people demanded it and the people will not accept anything less. You are powerful because you are the people. I trust you because you are the people. I believe in you because you are the people. I love you because you are my brothers and sisters. And you are here because you are not afraid to dream. I congratulate you, I commend you, and I commission you to become the change you want to see in this world. So I wish you all the best of success. Thank you, thank you. It is. It is not easy to follow that speech. <laughs> well, Chancy, the work that you have done is so inspiring. The work that you have done also representing our core values. The work of social justice inspires us all just to signify your contribution to our community and our country. On behalf of Pacific Oaks trustees, faculty, and staff, I would like to present to you an honorary degree of social work, Doctor in Social Work. Well, as Chancy mentions, brother and sister, we just welcome our sister with a doctorate degree in social work. That's also signify a new degree at Pacific Oaks. We have both bachelor and master degree in social work at Pacific Oaks.